you are absolutely worthy of love for exactly who you are. You know what I mean? Like there's no mistake in the way that you're born. If you are born and you're like, I know that I love people that are the same gender as me. That's right. If you're born with one physical attribute and you're like, that doesn't match who I know I am, you're right. And I just don't want anyone ever being a kid and thinking that they're who they are is inherently wrong because it's not. My guest today on the Kindnesses pod is such an inspiration. You know, I think music can be such a unifying tool. It's something that we can all really sit down and say, hey, music has gotten me through. I can remember when I was younger, there are a couple of albums that really stood out to me. I mean, Carol King's Tapestry was one of my all time favorite albums that I would listen to on repeat pretty much all of my adolescence, just dreaming about what was to come and who I was going to be as an adult. The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill was another one. Oh, every single time. I heard the words to Zion. It just took me to this other place in time. And it's been a while since I have felt that way about music. Nothing has really struck me in the way that music back in the day would. Well, I was scrolling TikTok one day and this beautiful song came on and I could not believe my ears. I had to keep playing it and playing it and playing it over again. And I just wanted to read you a couple of the lyrics before I introduce my guests today. I don't love a body. That's just skin and bones. It's not somebody. I don't look for reasons that they taught me. Maybe we're missing the point. Girls who love girls and boys who love boys. Truth is, it's not black and white. There's not a blueprint. Call me what you like. I'm just a human. Maybe I love them all equal. And maybe I just love people. (laughs) Without further ado, my friends, welcome to this week's episode of The Kindnesses Pod. Today, I am so honored to have Morgan St. Jean here. She is a music sensation with unfiltered lyrics and jaw-dropping delivery. She was number eight on Billboard Top 40 in Canada. She has over 800,000 listens a month on Spotify. She's performed with Lady Gaga, and most recently, she wrote this incredibly beautiful song, everyone. It's called Skin and Bones. If you have not heard it, you need to go and listen to it immediately because it really is like the pride anthem of the year. So I'm really excited to have you here. Thank you so much. That's very sweet. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah. So did I leave out anything, anything you want to share, anything that really resonates as to who you are or what inspired you to start doing music? I mean, I, I have been doing music my whole life, so it sort of wasn't really a choice. I feel like for me, it was sort of Mm -hmm. something that I fell into and then it felt so aligned with who I was and just like my purpose in life that I never stopped. I don't, I don't really feel like I ever sat down and thought, maybe I'll try singing. It was just always a part of me um, Hmm. and writing and stuff. And then I think since then it's kind of become more of a choice to continue and to, you know, stick with it and everything. But I am super inspired by lots of different things. You know, I really, I read a lot of songs that are um, inspired by social causes that I believe in and, and uh, especially women and just women's rights and women's bodily autonomy and things like that, because I find uh, that so often women are, underrated and, and and not viewed in the way that I view women, which is just absolute superpower or superheroes. Sorry. And um, yeah, so I think I'm also inspired by, you know, Instagram captions that I see or things that I see my friends going through or things that I'm going through. It's really just, it could be anything. And, and then I just kind of try to put my own spin on it. I love that. So <laughs> anyone who is listening and Morgan, you may not know this, but every single T that we have ever put out very, very similarly aligned. Like I put a blog to go with everything that we put out. It's not just something that is like cute and, and gets conversations going, but it's something like very deeply rooted in my being and everything that I fight for and believe in. And actually the first song I heard of you, uh, yours was not all men. And I was interestingly wearing our reproductive rights tea at the time. 
Wow. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. Like, this is phenomenal. If I could take everything that we do at our business and put it into song form, it would embody your music. Oh, so that's very nice. Really yeah. Cool. I mean, I think, I think with any sort of art, you know, whether you're making teas or like myself writing songs, I think it's easy to just kind of say what's been said before. Mm. And don't get me wrong. I love a pop song that just makes you want to dance and that's the full purpose of it. And I think there's a lot of value to that as well, you know? Um, but I think for me, I've found that my audience resonates most when I am just almost painfully vulnerable and painfully mm. honest, you know, and mm -hmm. um, and they really hold me accountable as a songwriter because they have made it really clear that they want me to continue to write songs that sort of push the boundaries and that um, don't just talk about the same, you know, love and breakup. And again, those things are wonderful. And I do have those songs. But um usually the songs that my fans resonate with most are the ones that are saying something a little more than that. Have you found it harder at times when writing stuff like that? Have you received some pushback? Because we all know that like social media can be this wonderful thing. It can connect people like you and I and other people. However, it can be a little rough sometimes too. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, social media has empowered every single human being to feel like they can say anything. Mm -hmm. And that is really beautiful in a lot of ways because it, I think, has empowered people to say when they think something is beautiful or that they love something or support something. And it's given people from across the world, like the ability to, to connect with other people. Um, but it's definitely given voice to people who maybe otherwise would be like, I shouldn't bully someone and say that out loud, but they feel mm -hmm. empowered because they're behind a keyboard. And um, I certainly get a lot of pushback. I think part of what I do is, is, is spark conversations that are maybe a little polarizing or a little difficult, mm -hmm. but I'm proud of that because I think it's really important to have those conversations and to express, you know, our experience as women or whatever it may be. And um, I'm just, I'm sort of not that phased by it anymore. I don't know if I've just become, you know, kind of used to it or what it is, but I think also, um, I think a lot of times people who are leaving a negative comment or whatever, it's more of a reflection of what they're going through internally. Mm -hmm. And so the best thing that I can try to do is just send them love. But I get a lot of comments that are so funny that make me crack up that are like, she is horrible and God, who could believe something like this? But I really like her voice. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm always like, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. It's a good reminder that like everyone is human, you know? And so sometimes people just need a little bit of love and a little bit of uh, empathy. Yeah, that's such a beautiful way of looking at that. I always say empathy over everything. And if we could live by that motto, our future would be going in a really good direction. Totally. Yeah. Totally agree. So another video of yours that I saw recently, and I know that once this airs, it's no longer going to be Pride Month. But as mm -hmm. I say all the time, we provide inclusive books year round. We talk about Pride all year round, and it's not Every something month, that has to Pride end, <laughs> right. It's not something yeah. that has to end in June. Um, so this video that you shared recently of you and your dad had me in tears as i'm oh. sure it did anyone who watched it mm -hmm. and i want to hear a little bit about your coming out story was that the first time you had truly told him your like authentic truth yeah i think it's it's funny because i don't really personally resonate with the phrase coming out okay because i sort of just believe that like we're humans and we love humans but i also understand mm -hmm. that when you know, the current society, you do have to specify if you are not just like, I'm straight and that's that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I always joke, like I actually saw a TikTok today that was hilarious. It was these two dads that came into a, a girl's room and they were like, happy pride month. And the girl was like, I've got something to tell you guys, I'm straight. And I was like, it's just so funny because, you know, I, I just think it's it shouldn't even need to be necessarily a conversation. I don't think anyone should have to come out. I don't really like, I just think we should be able to be who we are and love who we love without a whole big hoopla around it. Mm -hmm. But I understand that that's not necessarily like realistic with where we are in society. But yeah, yeah I mean, sure. that, was really, that was really the first time my dad and I had had talked about that. And that I, I think he always just kind of knew that I am the type of person that just, I just love people for who they are. And I don't, I don't, feel the need to ascribe to any sort of label. Mm -hmm. And I 
I think there's something really powerful about that, but I had, we'd never really talked about it directly. And certainly he had never heard that song before and me really saying it like directly. So it was super emotional and I'm just really lucky to have the most incredible and supportive parents. And they're the ones who raised me to be this way, to be accepting mm -hmm. of people and to be loving of all people. And um, so I don't, I don't feel like, I don't know, it almost didn't feel like a huge deal to me, but his reaction is what kind of made it feel like, so much more emotional because he was so emotional and he's just so mm -hmm. with me and so i almost didn't realize how emotional it was going to be until i saw his reaction because it just made me realize that that is really brave and it is you know something to celebrate that i can stand here and say i love anyone regardless of their gender and i don't need to label myself and i don't need to feel like i'm coming out or anything like that but i just that's enough for me to be able to say that and that in, in and of itself is really brave 100%. I think that's a really beautiful way to look at it. And I wish it were that way, right? Yeah. I wish, as you said, I wish it could just be that everyone loves whoever they love and no one has to come out. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned a little bit, sadly, our reality nowadays is there's attacks on the LGBTQ plus community yep. and particularly trans youth. And mm -hmm. it's important, I think, specifically for that community that they see people like you sharing your story. And to and be honest, that that's great. exactly why I decided to not only release the song, but talk about it because I've really mm -hmm. never, I've always just been kind of who I am and love who, yeah. I, who I love. And I've, I've really never thought about it. And I grew up in LA, which is a really accepting progressive mm -hmm. environment where I had tons of gay teachers and bisexual friends. Like every, everyone was just, again, loving who they loved and there was yeah. it a big deal. And so I never really thought about it. I never felt the need to talk about it. I never felt the need to have conversations with my parents about it. Um, and then I realized that my fans don't necessarily have that same situation. Mm -hmm. And probably a lot of them don't and, and, and have a really tough situation. And so I felt like it was sort of my obligation to them to say, hey, I'm with you, you know, and I mm -hmm. also like ex not necessarily experience it in the sense of I'm for fortunate to live in a really accepting and loving environment, but like I understand the fear and I understand the feeling of, of love and various things. And so um, I just really wanted to do it for them and, and, and hopefully try to be a role model and someone that they can look to and say, you know what, Morgan loves us and believes in us and, mm -hmm. and trusts us and she's with us. Have you had like one incredible story that has come your way since putting skin and bones out or i mean you probably have multiple so it's hard to pin down one but is there mm -hmm. one that kind of like sticks out at the forefront of your brain and you're like this is why i'm doing what i do honestly i've been so moved by the stories that have been shared with me and it's it's really something that i don't feel like i've experienced since not all men which is the song that you mentioned before mm -hmm. because that was the first time that I put out a song and people just opened their hearts to me about some things that were like so heartbreaking or really positive and making them feel really empowered you know and it just uh it was really moving for me to to hear those stories and this time around I've had a similar experience and I'm just so grateful that people trust me enough to share those stories it's like so mind-blowing to me and I and I feel so humbled and like honored that people would even send me messages a couple of people have said you know they want to dance to it as their first dance at their wedding or um you know a couple of people have, have said that it sparked really important conversations with their children you know they've played the song for their kids and been like let's talk about what this means and what like love can look like because it can look like so many different things and that's mm -hmm. all valid um but there was one story that really meant a lot to me someone sent me a picture of this humongous mural like chalk mural that they had painted and it took them like a whole week and um they said that you know my song really helped them get through because they were getting a lot of harassment and like hate as they were creating this mural and that skin and bones just really motivated them and and made them feel really safe and supported and then they actually said that some older woman i think she was a cancer survivor they said came up and asked them about that song and it was really inspiring to her and wanted to inspire her to be creative again and and get back into her art and stuff so uh that was so i like almost cried when i read that <laughs> no it's it is i mean for me and i'm sure everyone right music 
does some incredible things. And throughout my life, like music has just been something that I've always turned to. Mm -hmm. And to be completely honest with you, um, I had my first child like right before the world shut down. Mm. My parents were both extremely high risk, took COVID very, very seriously. We're living in the state of Florida. Um, as you can imagine, things weren't as inclusive due to the nature of our business. Um, went into my husband's office one day and just was in hysterics saying like, I can't be here anymore. Like we need, we need to live somewhere else. It's not okay. So fast forward <laughs> to now, um, I kind of stopped doing in-person events where we were giving out books mm -hmm. and I heard your song a couple of weeks ago and a local pride event was like, we would love to have you here to like donate LGBTQ plus books during drag queen story hour, this, that, and the other. And I kid you not, I had a full blown like anxiety attack and I listened to your song and I realized how important the work is that we are doing and how important it is to show up. I feel like myself getting emotional, yeah. but how important it is to show up specifically for LGBTQ plus youth right now. Yeah. And it was the most amazing event that I have been to thus far. And your music is doing big things. Oh, thank you. That actually makes me emotional too. Um, like I feel the same way. I mean, I think it's amazing to just be, able to have any sort of impact, but to hear that it's inspired you mm -hmm. to like do the work that you're doing, which is so important. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's so crazy that I can sit here and say that as someone from LA, because that is such a, in general, ex and my environment in particular, accepting and loving place that like, I didn't have a whole lot of issue with mm. you know, talking about my sexuality and things like that. But I know that's not the case for so many people. And it's actually like a life and death situation for so many kids, especially. And so it's like our obligation to the next generation and to kids mm -hmm. to support them and show up for them and create safe spaces for them. Um, and so I, I think it's amazing that you were able to kind of overcome your own stuff to, to mm -hmm. show up. For them. Yeah, it was. And it was something that I needed too, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was, I just wanted to share that with you because you're really doing big things. And I think it's important for, I mean, that's something that we talk about all the time, right? The reason why inclusive books are so important and music such as yours or television shows is because people need representation. Totally. Totally. Like, it makes you feel loved and seen and valued for who you are as opposed to feeling othered, you know? I mean, it's like the whole thing with um, The Little Mermaid and the new, it's, is it Halle Bailey who's playing yeah, The Little Mermaid? Yeah. And it's so cool to see little girls, you know, look up to somebody who looks like them and be able to, and, and I don't know, I just think that's really special. And especially as like white people, you know, we've had that, that's sort of the, the norm and it's expected. And I can't really imagine what it would feel like to be a little girl and look up at all the princesses and be like, wait, but none of them look like me. I can't mm -hmm. be a princess because they don't look like me. And so I think it's so important um, in, in every way that we have representation and that little kids can look up to someone and be like, oh, they're like me. Yeah. Every child deserves to be the princess or mm -hmm. the prince or the hero or just, anyone that they want to be. And in order to feel empowered to do so, that representation is key. Totally. 100%. Yeah. So I want to know what advice you would give to any potential queer person who may be listening to this or you specifically, what do you want to tell them? Oh my gosh, that's a big question. Um, I know. They have to unapologetically love themselves because regardless of what's happening in there, because, you know, some people, it's not safe for them to come out or some people, they're not in an environment where um, the external can be supportive. And so I think it's so important as humans that we find love for ourselves internally and sort of be a tree in the middle of a hurricane. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm that's at the end of the day, like who you will always have your own back and you have to find self-love and you have to find self-worth in yourself first. And if that means, you know, 
talking to a therapist if you can, or talking to a trusted adult who you can feel supported by, whatever that means. But like, I think it's so important to just realize that like you are so worthy of loving yourself exactly who you are. You were born correct. You know what I mean? Like whatever you mm -hmm. feel, that is that is who you're meant to be. Like I love Lady Gaga's song, Born This Way. She says like, yes. God, mistakes, you know? And it's like, nobody is a mistake. Everybody mm -hmm. is, is worthy of love for exactly who they are. And so um, I think, I think like learning to really truly accept yourself and love yourself despite whatever is going on around you is so powerful and know that there's people like you and people like me who love and support you and your journey and we believe you whatever you believe like wh however you feel we believe you and we support you and we love you and learning to give that to yourself i think is really important i don't know if that was said very well but do you know what i'm saying it was said so well okay. <laughs> it was exactly what anyone would want to hear yeah it's just, all about grounding yourself in love yeah and i just think I would, it would kill me for any young person to feel like they were a mistake or that there's something mm -hmm. wrong. Like you are absolutely worthy of love for exactly who you are. You know what I mean? Like there's no mistake in the way that you're born, in the way that you are like, you know, if, if you are born and you're like, I know that I love people that are the same gender as me. That's right. If you're born with one physical attribute and you're like, that doesn't match who I know I am, you're right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and I just don't want anyone ever being a kid and thinking that they're who they are is inherently wrong because it's not. Yeah. And there's a lot of loud noise right now. And mm -hmm. I think it's important that we continue to have these discussions and we are just as loud, but we are loud and grounded in love mm -hmm. because that's what people need. Totally. And yeah. just to know that you always have your own back, but there's other people that you can find them online and YouTube videos yeah. if you have to. Like there's other people there to show you that you're not alone. Absolutely. Because it can feel, I mean, maybe it's just like me. And I shared a little bit about how I've lived over the past couple of years that things can feel extremely isolating, but I know I'm not alone in that too, dependent upon Maybe you live in a place like you mentioned that isn't as accepting, or maybe you've chosen to live a certain type of way. Things can feel like really isolating. However, mm -hmm. that is the beauty of social media because right. I have connected with so many incredible friends, literally via Instagram, that it has given me hope. Yeah, totally. I completely agree. And when I see like kids and stuff who are so vocal about everything that's happening and it just gives me hope too. I feel the mm -hmm. same way. Yeah. It reminds us of our humanity and that hopefully the future is going to keep moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. How can people support you? How can we, because you also put out a video recently that was kind of really raw and vulnerable about mm -hmm. your struggles with music. Oh gosh. You know? I forget that people can see things that I post on social media. <laughs> it's okay. It's good to be vulnerable, but I really want people to hear what you have to say. And I want to know how they can truly fully support what you were doing. I really appreciate that. I mean, yeah, like I think choosing a career in the arts in general is probably really difficult for everybody. And I'm so fortunate that I have supportive fam a supportive family and friends and just like an amazing community of people who believe in me. Um, but like obviously the imposter syndrome is really real and uh, it's just difficult and it's it's hard to feel like, you know, I feel like sometimes I put my heart and soul into things that I believe in so strongly and I, I call them the dudes in suits, which is like, okay, the industry. I just, it doesn't feel like really sometimes I can get them on my side. But mm -hmm. the thing that I take solace in is the fact that I have this amazing, beautiful, loving, supportive community of people online and stuff. So at the end of the day, that's worth so much more than, you know, some random Spotify playlist or whatever. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think the way that people can support me, social media is huge, you know, follow me if you don't use my songs in your videos, that's really big. Um, and just, you know, add my songs to a playlist if you can, or share it with a friend, things like that really make all the difference because it's just, um, building something from the ground up, every single listen counts and every single follower counts and, and all of those things really make so much difference for me. Yeah, and I know anyone listening to this, literally the whole foundation of 
what we do is a redefining of kindness, right? Like thinking of kindness in different ways that must be rooted in justice and grounded in action. And your music is exactly that. So everyone who listens to this and loves Kind Cotton is going to love your music. So Thank please take a listen. Yeah, I'm for sure. I'm excited for people to hear it. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. So I can't have you go before I hear what your true definition of kindness is, because this is the Kindness Pause, Kindnesses podcast. And I ask everyone if they could describe kindness in any sort of way, how would you do that? I think kindness is loving people, not, not only letting people be whoever they are, but loving them for it. Mm. Yeah. Because it's one thing to just let people be who they are, like live and let live. It's another thing to sh like say to someone, I see you for who you are. I accept you for who you are. And I love you for who you are. Because yeah. based on as humans, I think we all deserve more love. Mm -hmm. Without any if, ands, or buts yeah. attached to it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Thank you, Morgan. You have been an absolute pleasure. I am so excited to now have had this conversation with you and to continue to witness your beautiful musical journey. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the work you're doing. I'm, I know it probably is really hard at times. So um, it's really important stuff. And, and I'm grateful for you. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. So I've been sitting here for quite some time reflecting upon my conversation with Morgan. And there's one thing that keeps coming back to me. And it's this idea that we need to recognize our privilege and then we need to use that privilege to do something about it. Morgan's story is going to help more people than she will ever know. And she grew up in a way in which she felt like she never really had to share that because she was in an environment that she thought was so inclusive. And I love that she came to the realization that that's not the case for everyone else. So as you go about your week, as you go about your month, as you go about the continuing years, I want you to remember that not everyone's story is yours. And we can either sit back and do nothing about that, or we can boldly stand up and be on the right side of history. And that is exactly what Morgan is doing. And I'm just so very grateful to continue to connect with people who are standing in their truth, who are bravely sharing who they are, and who are making a huge impact on this world. Thank you all so much for listening to this episode of the Kindness Is Podcast. If you love it and it's adding even a little bit of value to your life, we would love, love, love if you could subscribe, rate, and review so we can reach even more people and make this world a little bit more kind.